and welcome to Sarah Stamping Retreat. Today's video is part of an Alter New Educator part, so once you've watched the video, be sure to check out the other educators' videos too for loads of inspiration. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a few different wreath style cards with my stamp wheel. So if you've not seen a stamp wheel before, it is Alter New's version of a stamp positioning tool, but it, they've kind of taken it one step further and made it so that you can do your wreaths with it, you can do your stenciling with it. So it's kind of like a step further than any of the other stamp positioning tools that I've seen. So it looks like this. So you can see it doesn't have the hinge that a lot of them have. It has this plate that slots into here. And my worry was that this would be more difficult than the other tools where you just kind of go like that to do normal stamping with. So for example, I often use my stamp positioning tools to use like large stamps um, so that I can stamp and then if it doesn't all stamp I can stamp again but actually because this slots into place it is actually really easy to do that but it's also got this kind of design where you can move this around now my top tip would be to put something on one of these kind of like petals of this so that you know where you're starting I always start with that at the bottom so then I know if I want four of something, it just goes in every on every side. If I want eight of something, then it goes here, and then here, and then here. So whenever I'm doing a wreath, I can then keep track of where I am. And I found that really, really helpful. So to make my cards today, I'm going to use this Botanical Wreath Builder stamp set, which is a nice layering stamp set. It's really, really pretty. So I'm going to start with an ordinary wreath and then we can move on to some kind of different ways of doing wreaths that make them a little bit different. So the other thing I'm going to use for this card is this 6x6 positioning piece. So this pack has four different positioners on it, one for four and a quarter inch squares, one for five and a half inch squares, one for six inch squares and one for your four and a quarter by five and a half inch cards. It just means that if I put this down here and then I put this right next to it, then I know it's going to be in the centre of my workspace and it means that when I do a wreath, it's going to be in the centre of my card. So I'm going to start off my wreath by using some of these outline stamps. So I'm going to start off just using the one stamp at a time and then you'll see afterwards how I can build that up do multiple stamps at a time. So I'm going to ink this up with my black ink. I'm going to make sure that my heart is at the bottom of my stamp wheel and then I'm going to stamp that. And I think I want to stamp that eight times round so then that will be the positioning. It will be just a little bit further round than that. So that means that my next stamp, my heart is going to be in the corner. So then I can start to position some other things on. So these are going to be the next two things I'm going to position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to the side because that's the next time I need this stamp. And then I'm going to pick up these two stamps here. So then I can ink them all up. And I'm going to put the heart to the side so I know they're in the right place. So the only thing you're really needing to remember is where next this heart's going to go. So it's going to go in the corner, then up, then corner, then this side, then corner, then down. Then we've got these stamped. So I'm going to do another one with those so that I can see how that's building up. Because then you can decide whether you want to keep on building more in or if that's enough. So then this is going to go into that corner. So now we can really start to see that building up and I think I want some more foliage coming out this way. So then the next one is going to be with this at the top so I'm going to pop that on and pick those up. So this time the heart's at the top. So the heart's at the top, we're going to put it into place. Right, now we want the heart in this corner. And then I've made a mistake there. You can see that one 
is going over the top of the other one. So I think I like this one better. I'm going to take this one off. And I'm just going to ignore the fact that I've made a mistake there. I'll cover that up somehow later. So I'm just going to take that one back off. So the way to avoid making that mistake is to only add on one stamp at a time. Because I added on the two stamps at a time and didn't really think about where they're going to cross over, then that's the reason that I got that problem. So you can see now, my next step is to go down at the bottom. But this one, this flower, I've already done at the bottom. So now I can take that one off and I'm only stamping the other ones. It wouldn't matter if I did stamp that again because it could just go straight over the other one. But I may as well just take it off because we don't need to stamp it over. I don't want some flowers to be darker than others. So then we need to go into this corner. So then I've done a whole way around with these two. So I just need to finish off with this small one. So now I'm going to go around and colour in the images with these solid stamps. So I'm going to do two at a time. You could do more than that, but I feel like I'm just going to get mixed up with the colours if I do that. So I am going to place them at either side. So this one I want to cover this. And it's really nice because it means that you can just kind of cover it straight over. Make you only have to make sure that you're happy with the placement on one of the images. And I'm going to do them either side so that it's really easy to ink them up in different colours. So then I'm going to make sure that my heart's at the bottom again so that I know where I am. And then I'm going to use maple yellow for this smaller flower. And I'm going to use rubellite for this bigger flower. So then I've got my heart at the bottom. And I'm going to add those on. So then I need the heart to the corner. If you find it difficult to remember which colour goes on which, you can always do them one at a time. Heart to the side. So now you can see this is where they start to swap over because we've got the heart at the top and the pink and the yellow are now kind of in a place where they're starting to mix. So then there's the flowers done. Now I'm going to come in with the olive and the moss to do the leaves. And this is so nice to do because as you can see, as long as you line them up nicely the first time, you don't even have to worry about the placement after that first time. So I think I'm going to do the larger leaf in moss and then the smaller leaf in olive. And again, I'm going to start with this heart at the bottom. So then because I make mostly birthday cards, I'm going to use this birthday greeting stamp set for my sentiment. You can see it's got loads of different ways of saying happy birthday, birthday wishes, sending birthday hugs, all those kind of things. So you've got like different size things for all kind of different occasions. And it's quite nice because, for example, if you need something to fit in a specific place like this, then you've got lots of different sizes so you can usually find something to fit most cards. So then I'm going to ink that up with my backing. And then I'm going to use my Rubellite marker just to colour in that happy birthday. And then I've got this little butterfly. That's this sunlit butterfly's die. So I'm just going to layer that up. And this is going to be what I used to disguise this little mistake that I made. It's not going to completely cover it, but I think you won't really notice it once this is over it. I'll just kind of disguise it. And then 
I'm just going to use foam pads to pop that up, add a bit of dimension to my card. And then I think if I put that there, then nobody will notice that I've made that mistake. So then I've got my cherry blossom and pocket full of sunshine enamel dots. And they are the sets that the colours that I've used on here come from. So you can see this is the ruby light and this is the maple yellow. So then I'm going to use these in the centres of these flowers so that they've got contrasting centres. Then you can see we've got that really pretty card finished. It's a bit of a bigger card to what I usually make as well. I normally make 5x5 five five cards if I'm making squares. It's a 6x6 six six card. So then for this next card, I've got a 4 and 3 quarter inch piece of cardstock, 4 and 3 quarter inches square. And I'm going to butt it up against this side of the stamp wheel because I want to do an offset wreath this time. The whole wreath won't go on the card, it'll come across as a curve. And then I'm going to do something really similar to what I did last time. So I'm going to use the same stamps, the same colours, but we'll just get a different look because we're offsetting that. So this time, because I want to see where the curve is going to go around here so I can get the shape, then I'm going to do all the stamps on this small one first and then I'll add in the extra details. So I'm starting off at the bottom like usual. So the heart's at the bottom. And then I'm going to carry around just like I did last time. So this is going in the corner this time. And then to the side. And then to the top. And you can see that is where my wreath starts to come off my cardstock. So then I'm going to add in a larger flower. in this leaf so then I can move on to colouring them with the coordinating stamps so I'm going to use the same colours as last time I'm using this maple yellow for the flower and then I'm going to use moss for this leaf So then I'm lining up these ones to go round on those. It's always a good idea to line them up on full ones rather than partial ones because you, you tend to do a better job of lining them up. So I'd start with those ones and then move to the partial ones as you stamp around. So I'm going to use the ruby light and the olive on these. There we've got our kind of partial wreath and I'm going to go and give this a bit of a rinse in the sink. If it comes out then you can rinse it really easily. So then the next thing I want to do is make a sentiment. So I'm going to use the same greeting set and I'm going to use this happy birthday. So I'm going to heat emboss this in white onto black cardstock. And then I'm just going to cut around there. So then let's just put this card together. Then I'm going to pop my sentiment up on some foam strips. So for this one, obviously, our wreath piece was on five and three quarter inch cardstock. So then this black piece is... So then for this one, obviously, we did this wreath piece on four and three quarter inch cardstock. So then this black one is five inches square and the card blank is six inches square. I'm going to position this just here. And then I'm going to use some of these number dots again. So I'm going to use this slightly darker shade for the centres on the yellow ones this time so I don't have any of that lighter shade left but because it's like a dark shade of a similar colour then I think it still goes really nicely. 
then that one's finished and because we've used different placements slightly different layout then even though we've used the same stamps the same colors we've ended up with quite a different card to this one so then for this next one i've got a four and a half inch piece of cardstock and i want to use this and i want to have a look at how these lines are going round because I want an arc around each of these corners so I think I want to follow this arc here that's not the middle circle not the one next to it but the one next to that so I'm going to make sure that I put my stamp onto the side of the cardstock but also in that middle arc and it just means that as I go round then it's going to follow that arc around and this time I'm going to turn my wheel this way so it's going to go into this corner and then to this side here and then I'm going to flip my cardstock 180 degrees and then I'm going to repeat it in this corner here so I'm going to start again in the middle so my heart's going to be facing down and then it's going to go to this corner and then it's going to go to this side so then I want to try and fill in the pattern a little bit I need to be mindful because obviously if I put this here then when we turn to the other side those are going to overlap so I kind of want the bigger things to go into the circle and then I can always put some kind of smaller things coming out so let's try that And then the next stamp will kind of go off that side and then I'm going to do another one back this way so it's going to go into this corner so it's kind of like back one to finish it off that way and then I'm going to flip that round again and then I can follow round again And so then I can place these ones to colour it in. So I'm going to colour pull, colour the small leaf in olive, the flower in rubelai, and then the larger leaf in moss. And then here, because I only need to do the pink as we move round, I only need to ink up flower and then as we move back around here I'm going to only ink up the leaves and then I can rotate the paper and then I'll repeat the process so then we've got this lovely pattern that's kind of the two curves of the wreath so I'm going to heat emboss this happy birthday sentiment again in white embossing powder on the black cardstock. And then I'm going to cut this down. So then for this card I'm going to use this kind of purpley card base. So then I'm going to glue this piece to a piece of black quarter of an inch bigger. And then I can glue it onto the cardboard. Then I'm going to pop some fine strips behind the sentiment. And then I'm going to add some enamel dots to the centre of the flowers. And then I wanted to add in some extra black too, so I'm going to add some of these black enamel dots on just to kind of decorate as well. So then there's that card finished. Then there are all three of today's cards. So I hope that you've enjoyed today's video and it's given you some ideas for different ways to create wreath cards. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate you clicking like below. And you can also press subscribe if you'd like to see future videos. If you press the bell button and select all, then YouTube will also notify you when I've got new videos available. All of the products that I've used for today's card are listed in the description below. And you can also find a link there to my blog where you can find a picture supply list if that helps you find what you're looking for. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you again soon.